Oh. Ah. Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today I'm going to talk to you about my old trailer and all the stupid things I've done trying to keep it uh, working. But first, here's an unpaid shout out to another YouTuber, OM Fishing. This talented guy knows his way around outboard motors, and he puts together some very, very educational videos for people who aren't afraid to try and work on their old outboard. He's down to earth, he does a lot of his videos outside, doesn't use a lot of fancy tools or fancy jargon, and he really knows his stuff. He's very enjoyable to watch. Go, go check him out if you're ever going to plan on working on an old outboard motor or whatever because he definitely inspires confidence and he shoots some really good videos. Now, on to our video. When I bought my boat, it was October. And since we were completely new to this whole boat thing, we were very, very eager to get it in the water. Who wouldn't be, right? So I didn't pay much at all for the boat and the trailer. The boat was seaworthy and the trailer was functional. So I honestly have no complaints there at all. And there were some good things about this trailer. But the trailer also had some real bad things that I needed to deal with. The power winch didn't work, the tires were very dry rotted and old and the rims were rusted solid to the wheel studs. They were just one big glob of rust. And some of the rollers were falling apart or missing altogether. The rusty fenders, well, they aren't a short-term usability or safety concern, so I haven't done anything about them yet. So let's go through my stupidity in chronological order. When it came time to take the boat out of the water for the winter, I discovered that my power winch didn't work. Of course, by now it's like late October, and I needed it right away. There weren't many in stock, and I didn't even know the weight of my boat to buy the right kind. So rule of thumb, always buy something bigger and stronger than you need, because it costs a whole lot more, and you can always justify it in an argument. So I came home from the store with a very cool looking Fulton F2 winch rated for boats weighing much more than mine. I probably spent about $100 more than I needed to. And if I would have looked a little harder for something simpler and appropriately sized for my boat, I probably would have been better off. But this one does work and does the job. I actually made my first boat-related YouTube video after I installed it because I couldn't find any videos out there that really showed me the process of putting one of these on. It's not a very good video, um, so don't bother going to look for it. So now I've got my rough old trailer that's about 40 years old with the top of the line most modern mechanical winch that could pull my boat out even if it was full of water. The winch is weighted for 1500 more pounds than my boat weighs. Over the winter I needed to address those leaky tires which were mounted to rims that were rusted solid to the hubs and they were just so bad. You weren't just going to spray penetrating fluid on those things. They just needed to go away. I went online and I bought some new hubs and bearings and bearing buddies, uh, looking around for some good deals, bought the right kinds of stuff there, put those on, that was good. And then I decided to really cheap out on the rims and tires, which was not a good idea at all. Some of us who are new to boats and trailers don't know anything about these things. So we go onto the internet and see that new trailer tires and rims are going to be about $150 to $200. At this point, I'm starting to realize why the word boat stands for bust out another thousand. So I go back on the internet and find some exact right size and right bolt pattern because I'm not a complete idiot. Tires and rims from some guy's Mitsubishi Galant or something for $40 total. Now I felt like I really had won. I had got a great deal. And if you don't know, 
trailer shoes, special tires. You can't use car tires. And it's because a trailer is pulled and it's supposed to track in a straight line. I put on my new hubs and that goes just fine. The trick with those, if your rim is rusted to the hub, pop off the center cap, take off that little cotter pin and that nut, and just pull the whole assembly off. That way you don't even have to try to deal with any rusted studs that would break. Then I go to put on my $40 Mitsubishi rims and I get a crash course in reality. The bolt pattern was perfect. The rims, however, had an offset. So they only fit mounted inside out. In other words, backwards. So they now stick out. As an added bonus, the valve stem is now on the inside of the rim. So when I want to check my air pressure or add air to these tires, it's not any fun at all. The next project I tackled was to replace a few of the worn and missing bunk rollers. These are the rubber rollers that the boat rolls on as it goes on and off the trailer. But of course, that wasn't going to be easy either. First of all, several of the side rollers were a non-standard size, and it was obvious that the previous owner improvised and had to cut up larger ones to get them to fit. And they're solid rubber, so that could be interesting to try to cut. When I added up my material estimates for the new rubber, metal pins, etc., I would have a few hundred more dollars in materials alone because rollers are not cheap. I figured out that a 4x4 fits right in the roller trays that I have, and I decided to make some bunks for the sides. And I only changed out one roller at the very end of the trailer. I had a lot of materials already, so I only needed to buy some adhesive spray and some washers for my screws. I already had the scrap carpeting, uh, which is outdoor carpeting, and I had decking screws, and I had treated 4x4 pieces that were long enough to fit. This part actually seemed to work out okay. Now, on implementation, it is a little harder to crank this boat up on the bunks, but I only spent about $10 for this part of the project. So, here's the trailer as it sits right now. As you can see, it still has the backwards car rims on there, but I only drive the trailer about one-eighth of a mile to the boat ramp and back, so I'm not on any highways or traveling above 10 miles an hour. Now, here's everything that I've spent on this trailer in the last year, not counting the original purchase of the boat and trailer and it certainly comes in way under what I would have had to spend for a solid used trailer around here, despite my mistakes and stupidity. This trailer still needs work. It needs proper tires and rims to go down the road, and we can't forget the rust holes on the fenders. I also don't think the wiring is tidied up as much as it should be, but you know what? It'll do for right now. Okay, so that's my boat trailer. Uh, if you liked this video, enjoyed it, found it entertaining, uh, watched, liked watching my stupidity, uh, then like, subscribe, comment below. Tell me I told you so. I'm, I'm good with that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.